before we go into the demo, I'd like to go through what we have in our environment. In the production side on the left, we have a set of SQL Server VMs and an ESX cluster connected to a Clarion CX4960 array. And on the right, we have their replicas using Recover Point to replicate the data to the recovery site. So in this demo, we will show virtualized SQL servers being failed over to the remote site using Recover Point replication technology. Here we can see the production vCenter server. If we take a look at the VM TPC E1, which is the VM we're going to fail over to the remote site with a different subnet. You can see the network configuration for the VM. It has the two IP addresses configured, one for production site and one for remote site. If we choose to edit the settings of the VM, we can see the network adapter is assigned. The F600 switch is the production switch and the R900 switch. The R900 switch is a switch that was created and the production ESX cluster with the same properties of the actual disaster recovery site distributed virtual switch. We had to do this in order to configure for failover to a different subnet. We assigned a VNIC on the dummy switch to the SQL Server virtual machine in production which is being failed over TPC E1. Here you can see TPC E1 configured with the, the NIC on the replica recovery site switch. If we go to do with the VM itself and check the network configuration and check the NICs, we can see the status of the DR site is unconnected. That's an unidentified network, whereas the production site is connected to a live distributed switch with uplinks connected to the production network. We then choose to shut down the guest on the production site. So TPC1 has gone offline on the production site. From the recover point GUI we choose to enable image access to the latest bookmark. This will provide read-write image access of a CRR copy to the remote ESX servers and allows the mount of the VMFS volumes on the remote vCenter server. This must be done for the three consistency groups associated with the VM TC SQL TPC E1. We then choose to fail over to the remote replica, which will start the transfer from the remote site. After we choose to fail over to the remote replica, all data transfer from the production source will be paused and the journal on the remote site will be erased. Again, this must be done for all three consistency groups associated with the VM. We now see that the remote replica has the role of production source Go to the recovery site vCenter server. We rescan the ESX cluster for data stores. We can now see the replicas associated with the TPC1 VM mounted on the vCenter on the remote site. Browse the data store with the VMFX file. And we choose to add to inventory. Choosing the, the SQL VMs um, folder as the location for the VM.
choosing the cluster and the host to place the VM click finish TPC1 is now registered on the R900 cluster we choose to edit settings you can see all the remote replica VMFF volumes attached and we connect the relevant Phoenix you can see that the VM has been reconfigured and we now power on the VM at the remote site Logging on to TPC1. You can see all disks are attached. We now see that the DR NIC is connected to the DR port group and it's live on the network on the remote site. We open SQL Server Management Studio. We browse to our databases. You can see that the TPC database is up. We have successfully failed over to a remote site using EMC Recover Point replication technology. If you'd like to find the full solution, please visit www.emc.com.